I'm getting old. How do I know that I'm getting old? Well, dummy, look at the calendar. No, 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 no. I'm, talk I'm not talking about chronological age. I mean, it's obvious I'm getting older. You know, I'm getting some some uh, gray strands in my beard. And, and uh, you know, each year that goes by, I can tick off another year and, and add that on to, you know, my birthday and, and whatnot. So, yeah, chronologically, it's obvious. I know I'm getting older. But, uh, you know, and also physically, uh, you know, I'm starting to get more wrinkles. I'm starting to get more aches and pains, you know, not seeing as well as I did. Don't have the 2020 vision that I once did. Yeah, all that's obvious indicators that I'm getting old. I'm more talking about mentally. How do I know that I'm getting old? Because I'm getting forgetful? Well, well, maybe sometimes. But more it's the attitude that I have for this upcoming generation. I'm finding the attitude that I have is a knee-jerk reaction comparing the upcoming generation to my generation. And it's no different than our grandparents and our parents did with us. You know, I mean, I'm looking at this generation called the millennials, uh, sometimes called Generation Y or Generation Z. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, they're just a bunch of unmotivated, you know, self-entitled, lazy, good-for-nothings. And, uh, you know, I, I never had such, such disrespect for my elders or my parents. They don't know what a real day's work is, and they don't know what work ethic is, and, and you know, all this kind of stuff. It's the exact same things that our parents and our grandparents said about us and our generation. And we're applying those same things you know, to, to this upcoming generation, which some of it is true, but we're guilty of painting a whole generation with one broad stroke, and we're picking apart and focusing on the negative aspects of a particular generation, which, you know, if you look at any given generation throughout history, you can find something negative uh, to pick apart and, and, you know, just to totally go off on. But the Lord is really dealing with my heart and, and, you know, really changing my way of thinking on how I see and perceive what is called the millennial generation. Um, now, I mean, I, I was in youth ministry, but hey, that was 20 some years ago. I wasn't that far removed from that particular generation. You know, I was still cool. I was still hip. I was still with it. I still, you know, knew what, what pop culture was all about, you know, all the inside jokes and, and, you know, all the, you know, the, the fresh sayings and, and, uh, you know, the latest music and whatnot. This music that's on the, the top forties, crap. You know, I'm not into this hip hop R and B, you know, kind of music. Don't understand it. Don't think it's you know talented. Don't like it. Um, you know, I I don't understand uh, fully this generation that's coming up. It's they're a big question mark to me. It bewilders me. So it's like you know, I'm not really geared and fit for youth ministry like I was 20 years ago. You know, I even admitted to some of my ministerial associates, you know, who says, hey, man, you know, why don't you get into youth ministry with us? And I'm like, hey, you know, dude, it's like I don't know how to handle that. I don't even know how to approach them. You know, it's like I don't even know how to relate to them. It's it's like I'm 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 in a foreign country speaking a foreign language. It's like, you know, that's not my cup of tea. You know, I'm 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 more for the uh, uh, 30 somethings and up. You know, I, <laughs> I'm speaking to my generation and older. Uh, but, but it was, it was sort of a challenge to me to say, Hey, you know, I mean, you got, you still got to do what you, what you can to reach out to this millennial generation. You know, it's, it's no excuse for you to sit back and say, Oh, well, I'm going to wash my hands of this generation. Cause I don't know them. I don't understand them. I don't know how to approach them. So the Lord has convicted me and has been challenging me. Uh, to research this generation, to look into this generation, it's it's blatantly obvious and easy to pick out the negative aspects of this generation because it's highlighted in social media, it's highlighted in the news, it's highlighted in pop culture. You know, it that that that's easy to dig out. But you know, we're we're to look at the good in everybody and in every generation, and we're to look at that good and to look at that potential and to to dig as a as a well. And to to hit that 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 black gold, to hit that artesian well of fresh spring water, and to have it gush out so that they can reach their full potential with all the good and positive, and teach them how to take the negative aspects of of their generation and their character traits, and and and, and channel that and and hone that into something good and positive. So yeah, yeah, I'm guilty. Yeah, I, I admit I'm I'm getting old. 
You know, my mentality is getting old. It's getting stale. I'm getting set in my ways. And that's, that's, that's just what happens uh, when you age. So as I said, it's easy to point out and pick apart the negative aspects. And a lot of people are labeling the millennial generation the lost generation. They're lost. They're unreachable. They won't even come to church. They won't even go to synagogue. You can't get them in a religious service. Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're making excuses. How dare we put God in a box? How dare we to try to take on the job and the responsibility of the Holy Spirit and to say this millennial generation is unreachable? They're a lost generation. Let's, let's start with the ones that come after them. Let's, let's start with the toddlers. Let's get them young. We've made a big mistake with the millennials. Too bad. Our fault. Our bad. We'll just brush them off and move on. No. How dare we? Number one, we're selling God short. I think it says in Isaiah that the arm, is, the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. Right? And, you know, God, he, he, he's, he's the God of impossibility. He can do anything. And when we say, oh, they're unreachable, we're putting ourselves in the steed of the Holy Spirit and trying to do the Holy Spirit's job and to reach out to them and to woo them in, to coax them in. Well, I don't understand why these why these millennials don't want to come to my congregation. We've got we've got fog machines, we've got a hip, cool praise and worship band. Heck, we got a coffee shop out in the foyer. We've got lights to set the mood. Guys, they're not looking for that. That's just cosmetic. That's just surface stuff. You know, some of them has even softened the message and made it all nice and sweet and fluffy and palatable, thinking that will draw the, the millennial generation. They don't want that. They don't care about that. I'm not saying that those things are wrong or that you made a mistake in, in, in doing that. You know, hey, I love the coffee shop in the foyer. I, I love the, you know, hip, cool praise and worship music too. You know, I'm down with that. I don't have a problem with that. But to think that that's the key to, to woo and, and to bring in the millennials, you're wrong. We're wrong on that. And we're trying to play the Holy Spirit saying we can't reach them. It's not our job to try to woo them in. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. Our responsibility is to teach and preach the word of God unabated, unadulterated, not watered down. And we're to show genuine concern and genuine love and not be all critical and judgmental. That, that, that's our responsibility. And when we walk in the footsteps of Yeshua, our Messiah, and walk in love, that's going to, to you know, when, when, when the, the millennials see that we truly and genuinely care about them, that's going to draw them in. Now, now, what are, I mean, I'm no expert, and I'm just scratching the surface on this because I'm just learning about this because I'm just starting to research this. But, but what, are, what are the, you know, what are the millennials looking for? The millennials are looking for truth. They're looking for answers to the hard questions. Just saying, well, it's in your Bible, read it, isn't good enough. Or saying, well, this is the way we've always believed and this is the way it is and you've got to accept it by faith. That's not good enough. So what answers are they looking for? They're looking for the answers of what the Bible says about homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, marijuana, premarital sex. I mean, they're looking for biblical, truthful, solid answers, and it could be true, it could be in your face, and it could be raw. They don't care. Why? Because they're in your face and they don't care. They don't think they don't have a second thought about giving their opinion. And, you know, they don't care how blunt it is or how raw and real it is. They're just being honest and truthful. And it's not we perceive that as being rude. We perceive that as being cocky and arrogant and disrespectful. But, but, but they're, they've done away with all of the, the, the protocols and, and proclivities and niceties and, and you know, uh, all that. They, they, they just tell it like it is and they say it like it is, whether anybody likes it or not. And I don't think that their intention is to truly shock or offend anyone. They just want, they just want to get down to the brass tacks and what's real. So they're looking for those hard answers. And pastors, rabbis, ministers, if you don't have the answers to the LBGTQ, to socialism, to marijuana, to premarital sex, to drugs, if you don't have the biblical answers to these things, they're not going to listen to you. They don't want to hear a word that you have to say. They don't want to hear, oh, it's in the Bible, read it for yourself, or this is the way that, that we believe, and you just got to accept it on faith. They want to know why. When you don't have the answers, and it's okay to say, hey, I don't know, but... But 
let me let me research it and let me look it up and let me get back to you and we'll sit down and we'll discuss it. They, they respect that, but just to say, you know, just to to act like you know the answer or just to act like this is the answer and they got to accept it the way it is, it's not good enough for them. And and when you answer that way, they go searching somewhere else and they'll find their answers in New Age. They'll find their answers, you know, with, you know, with it, with liberalism or socialism. You know, though, and it's not that they're looking for answers that'll tickle their ears per se. It's nice if if it backs up the way they feel and the way they believe, but they want to know the truth and they want to know the whys behind the truth. Okay. Now, you you th this generation is somewhat akin to the generation of the '60s in the sense that they are ready and willing to fight for a cause. They will protest at the drop of a hat. So if they find a cause that they truly believe in. That they that they, they they truly can stand behind and fight behind and believe in and work towards and fight towards, they will do that and you will not be able to stop them. Uh, so just think, if they believe the gospel message, they believe the truth of the scriptures of the word of God, they believe the faith, they believe in salvation and Messiah Yeshua Jesus Christ, and if they truly believe that and truly believe in the Great Commission. My goodness, we have another reawakening on our hands. We have another revival on our hands. If they grab on to the truth and believe the word of God and the gospel with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, they will fight for it. They will die for it. They will protest for it. They will evangelize for it like, no, like nothing we've ever seen, like no other generation that was before them. They've got the goods, they've got the technology, they've got the savvy, they've got the know-how to get the message out, to make it real, true, clear, and relevant to, the, to this generation. So don't you dare say that the millennials are a lost cause or a lost generation. Don't you dare say that they're unreachable because you're, you're playing the Holy Spirit. It's not your job to woo them and draw them in. It's your job to love them and tell them the truth. And the Holy Spirit will do its job to bring them in. So just think about that. You know, we, we think, oh, woe is me, this world, oh, this sinful, sinful world. We're living in the last generation and, and the Lord could come at any moment. If, if it gets much worse, God will have to issue an apology to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings, as they say. And yeah, things look bad. Yes, we're living in the last days. We're living in very prophetic times. Yes, I totally agree with that. But you know what? I still think that there's the potential for a, 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 a reawakening, for an, another spiritual awakening. Because you think in the, in, in, the, in the roaring 20s, you know, with all the flappers and the decadence and the, and the free love. Hey, that sounds like the 60s. Well, the 60s were, were the 60s versions of the 20s. And, and the, millennial, the millennium is, is the, millennial, the millennial version of the 60s. It's all this liberalism and, and, and new age and enlightenment and free thinking and, and liberalism and, and no boundaries and erase all the lines. But guess what? In each of those generations, there was a reawakening and a revival on, on the cusp of it. Because after the Roaring Twenties, you had revivals happening in the Thirties and the Forties. And then you had a good moral time of the Fifties until the Sixties hit. Well, you know, it was like the Seventy. It, it was like the Sixties. You had the decadence of the Sixties. And that, that ushered in, once you got a hold of the hippies and the hippie movement, boy, the Jesus movement took hold. And boy, there was a revival with the hippie movement, man. And, you know, the 70s were a very satanic era and, and, and a very dark era. But, you know, the, the Jesus movement plowed through the 60s and 70s. And the 80s were, you know, yeah, they had their bad spots. But it was a relative uh, era of calm and evangelism and missions. You know, and then, the, and then the 90s, things started to decline again until we get to this point where we're at the millennium. You know, with the millennials. Well, if we could reach out to the millennials and get a hold of them like the flappers of the 20s, like the hippies of the 60s, we've got something. We've, we've got another revival. We've got another reawakening on our hands that could totally flip this world upside down. Yeah, things look bad and things look bleak. You know, but God is, is, is that, 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 like that last action hero. And, and swoops in at the last minute. 
you know, to, to, to save. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. So let's not sell this generation short. Uh, so, hey, this is my Ray Bash's ramblings. Thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. God bless. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.